Hi, I'm Christine Cushing and welcome to another helping of my favorite foods. Today, I wanna to share with you a recipe that's a culinary game changer for me. It is the perfect balance of a rich, meaty sauce, thin layers of homemade pasta, and a delicate, creamy sauce, all baked to bubbly perfection. Get ready for Bolognese lasagna. This is a recipe that people actually have stopped me on the street about and say, I love this recipe, so I wanna share it with you. There are three components. There is a rich meaty sauce, which is simmering on the back. For the step-by-step -step details about that one, you're gonna click on my meat video. Second part is the pasta, and you wanna click on that video too, step-by-step, -step, everything you wanna know about making fresh pasta. Third component is the bechamel, which I also have a video for. You wanna click on that for the details, because there are some details that I have up my sleeve to make a perfect bechamel. Okay, let's get started on pasta is step one. All right. I love to make my own pasta for this recipe. This recipe I would consider very epic. So I want to cut this in half. So I'm cutting it into four. Certainly you can buy prepared pasta, but every little step of a detour that you make is going to change the outcome. And what I want to end up here is with thin and I really mean thin sheets of pasta. Now this looks pretty thin, right? Do you dare me to go thinner? That's the whole point. I want ultra thin layers of pasta. Here's the final one. This is what I am looking for. It's number five on my machine here, on my dial. Okay. Look at that. I can use this as a scarf. It's that delicate. Here, because I'm making lasagna, I don't know what my final dimensions are gonna be. So I'm just gonna cut it into thirds evenly and then put some flour between each layer. So this part here, putting flour between the layers, very important so they don't stick together. I really want to tell you the story of this recipe because it's absolutely epic. This recipe is from an amazing chef in Bologna when I visited there years ago doing a show named Silverio. And when I said it was a game changer, for me, there's these recipes that kind of change your life. This Bolognese lasagna was one of those recipes that changed my culinary life. And it's so incredible, all the little intricacies and details that make it just like you start salivating when you think of this recipe. Okay, we got a rapid boil going here. And now in are gonna go the sheets, a few at a time so they don't stick together. The water is heavily salted. So I'm gonna dry four at a time. And literally, by the time this comes back to a boil, it's time to pull them out. Why am I even boiling this? I've seen so many people make lasagna with noodles that are not boiled, even with fresh pasta. What's gonna happen there is the water from your sauce, from the meat sauce, is gonna get sucked up by the pasta and then you're gonna get a drier lasagna. So for me, I don't wanna make a lasagna house that you know is like a house of cards that all stands up straight. It's gonna be ooey and gooey and soft and you can cut it with a fork. That's what is great about this lasagna. So you see it's come back to a boil. These babies are coming out. And then right away, what I like to do is I don't put this in a cold water bath, which would stop the cooking right away. That's one thing you could do. 
but then it's going to wash off all that starch. So what I want to do instead of that is take a little olive oil and drizzle it on top. So this little part here can be a bit messy and a bit tricky, but really the key is to have lots of olive oil in here so the pasta doesn't stick because it's going to continue to cook in the baking sheet. And you see how it's big? I spread them out. And then after it's going to cool down, I can pull them apart. Okay, that's the key here. These guys are ready to come off as well. These little steps all make a difference here. I want to let this cool down so that I can actually hold it and assemble. Okay, I'm just going to wipe down my surface here to get ready for phase three, which is the bechamel. This recipe is all about the timing. And actually, timing is a really big thing in the kitchen in general. I think that's the thing that people have a lot of challenge with. Bechamel, butter is in, I'm gonna add my flour and we can talk because I have a few grievances about bechamel. By the way, the step-by-step -step directions for this, you wanna click on my bechamel video. I have some really cool tips about it. But in general, let's just put this out there. A white sauce, which this is, a bechamel, has always been and will always be equal parts butter and flour because there's a lot of comments online about that. So you start with equal parts, butter and flour, but what is gonna change is the amount of milk that you use. So what I'm making here would be considered a loose bechamel or a light bechamel uh, because I want it to be loose because I'm anticipating all the other layers. So if you want a thicker bechamel, you just increase same quantity of flour and butter. If you want like a super thick bechamel, then you can, you know, double it essentially. So that's the key and that's what's so cool about the sauce, the bechamel. It's very versatile, but always those two elements are constant. Equal parts, flour and butter. Ah, I feel so much better after sharing that with you. All right, so butter and flour is good. I'm gonna add my milk. Remember this whole recipe is gonna be below the description, so do not fret about it. Silverio taught me so much about making pasta and essentially he introduced me to this whole idea in the north of Italy that it's about the cream, it's about the cheese, it's about the butter. It's not about olive oil or tomatoes, it's really about those elements. And what I also learned is that the further north you go in Italy, the softer the wheat gets. So that kind of explained the mystery. When you have a, a southern Italian pasta dish, it's generally made with durum wheat semolina, harder flour. So it's, you know, spaghetti, things like that, extruded pastas. When you get further to the north, the wheat is softer, and then you get these egg pastas that are generally, you know, rolled by hand because they're easier to work with. He taught me that. But, oh man, the first bite, I still remember that first bite when we really, we made it together and then I took my spoon and tasted it and I just was transported. I was just in a daze, really. So every time I taste it, I'm back in Bologna at that moment with Silverio. And we need some Parmigiano Reggiano, which of course is from Emilia Romagna, that region, right inside the bechamel. Okay, now it's assembly time. Layer one is gonna be just a little bit of meat sauce in the bottom. Each layer of pasta needs to have a little bit of meat and a little bit of bechamel. Now I wanna make sure that I save a little bit of that bechamel because the top layer is going to be bechamel. So a little bit of that and just a good little drizzle. And we repeat just alternating layers. 
Now you might notice that there's a lot of layers of pasta and that's what's so great about this lasagna. They're super thin, but there's many of them. Okay, I just wanna trim this. I'm not too concerned about everything matching up because I can just trim it as I go. In between also, you want a little bit of that Parmigiano Reggiano. Perfection. And I keep going. You'll also notice by the time I assemble it, that bechamel with the cheese in it is started to thicken even more right this is a good workout too oh yeah final on top just a little bit more parmesan just to get that golden crust The smell right now is crazy. All of these beautiful sweet cream cheese meat sauce. I'm anticipating it already. All right, my oven is set for 375. I do have it a bit high because I want those golden crusts. It's gonna be about 40 minutes or so, not longer than that. You don't have to wait too long, don't worry. <laughs> 40 minutes are up. You gotta see this. <laughs> Look at that. Ridiculous. I think I discovered a new Italian cologne. Here it is. Oh my goodness. Bolognese lasagna, who wants it? Look at how phenomenal this baby looks. Still a little bit hot, but you know what? It's all gonna be worth it because you're gonna see what's happening in here. Do you see what I'm talking about? I cannot contain myself. Remember I said you could cut it with a fork? Look at this. Crazy how good this smells. It is so tender in the mouth. The flavors are insane. This is what I'm talking about. I'm right back in Bologna. You are gonna absolutely love this Bolognese lasagna recipe. Thank you for joining me on another helping of my favorite foods. Be sure to subscribe. Make sure you let me know what you want me to cook and try this Bolognese lasagna.